the destruction of the planet is going up commensurately. That's probably oh not my how gosh. that word sent with how <laughs> convenient our, our lives are. Like the more convenient Absolutely. we are, the world's just going completely to shit. And so like maybe you can help us understand exactly how plastic waste management works, for example. Mm -hmm. Like this is going to be like a, a grade three presentation that you're going in. Like you've seen those like 50s cartoons for how they teach kids how things work. So like I'm at home. I use all my plastics. I put it into that shiny blue bin outside mm -hmm. or wherever in, in Spain it's on, the, on the corners. What happens then? Yeah. So uh, many people often ask is, is my plastic being recycled? And right. can plastic be recycled? And then why is right. only 9% of plastic globally recycled? And the short answers to all of those are, yes, your plastic is being recycled and it can be recycled, but only if we have very ideal, um, an ideal situation, which is like, if there is a strong waste management infrastructure in place, hmm. if the entire process is cost effective, if what you're recycling is clean enough, and if there's a valuable end use for that plastic product, right? Because recycling at the end of the day is a business. Um, so many, right. yeah, many of these systems and market conditions don't exist throughout our world in poor and in rich nations. And that's why only 9% of the plastic is being recycled, if that, you know? Right. So, okay. And sorry for you yeah. said, if it's clean enough, can mm -hmm. you touch on that a bit? Yeah. Because sure. I might, I might be an offender here. <laughs> we all probably are. I mean, there are a right. few countries in the world. I think like Taiwan is one of the only where you need to clean your recyclables before you put them into the bin. But um, okay. yeah, it definitely depends. So the life cycle of plastic, like in very short basic terms, is that petroleum is used to make virgin or brand new plastic. That is uh, that's created into a pellet or a resin, which is the raw material that is used to make a new plastic product. It's sold or given to you and me as consumers, and then we throw it in the mm -hmm. trash. So the ideal scenario is that you would wash the plastic because quality in into this uh, supply chain stream means quality out. The more, okay. like the dirtier that it is, first of all, a lot of the uh, stakeholders along the supply chain, they don't really want to touch super dirty stuff because it's just so costly to clean it. It's just like time intensive. Um, and the end product may not actually be valuable enough because the margins in this business are actually quite slim. Right. Yeah. But the ideal would be that you would wash it and then separate it by that plastic type, which is the number that's usually found on the bottom of the container, that one through seven. Mm -hmm. And um, number one, for example, is like PET, it's a water bottle, typically. Number two is HGPE, which is typically found like in laundry detergent household packaging. And then it goes through a, a supply chain of a company then picks it up, takes it to what's called a materials recovery facility or a MRF for further sortation and bailing. And then that bale is then sold to a company that's gonna wash it, shred it, and then maybe even melt it down into a new pellet, or that might be a whole nother uh, company doing that. By the way, right. that's like four different players. And in Myanmar, my company did three of those parts simply because that supply chain just doesn't exist. So I had to do the collection, sortation, um, washing, recycling really by myself. 